worst I've seen in my f life. Oh, it was a stone waller. Yeah, Did you feel like Dumba? He's gone through the yes. back end. He's through on goal, and the guy clearly puts his arm around him. Do you think it's helpful for somebody like him to describe it as shit? got the most valuable squad in the, in the world. Gareth Southgate just doesn't know how to put the pieces together. Welcome back to Football Trending. We have a very special episode because Scotland have bottled it and they are out. They're out. Can you bottle something that was never really... Yours to bottle? Yeah. It was the fact that the, the way they went about it, it was just us. Yeah, they were awful. <laughs> so the boys out in Germany, we decided to ask Scotland fans and England fans what they thought about Scotland going home. And you need to watch the VTs. <laughs> Worst I've seen in my fucking life. Miles off it. It's a, it's a fucking stonewall penny. It really is. How does it I, not go to VAR? Exactly. Because it, the refs it's are cheating bastards. bastards. That's why. Right. The refs are cheating bastards. It was, it was a fucking stonewaller. It was a stonewaller. Did you feel like Dumba? He's gone through the back yes. end. He's through on goal. And the guy clearly puts his arm around him. Hey, bottom line, where's the Where are the Euros? See you in four years, eh? Happy days. <laughs> You're winning all. You're winning all. Fuck England. You're a bunch of English bastards. Fuck a lot of yous. Honestly, I fucking hate England with a passion. Fuck a lot. Boys, question one. Penalty or not? For me, it's a penalty, I think. Oh, like, I think as Stuart Armstrong does enough to get his body in front of the defender and then the, I think the defender's knee catches his calf and it's clumsy and it's all a bit... I can see why it wasn't overturned, but so I, I think know, it's a can penalty. I, can I just say that is not what you said just before we started rolling. We've just spent like five no, minutes watching no, that well, in slow motion. And I can see was why it wasn't overturned. I can see why it wasn't overturned once he hadn't given it on field. Yeah. I think it is a penalty. If you're asking me to just watch yeah. it real time and also with a couple of replays, if you ask me 50-50, which way would I, I lean towards it is a penalty. I can see the whole thing is all a bit clumsy, but yeah. I also don't think... Scotland can blame it. Like uh, Steve Clark has come out and said, like yeah. the fact the ref is Argentinian <laughs> was the was the reason they lost. I was like, actually having four shots on target in three games yeah. might have something to do. Yeah, with it yeah. As Grant well. Henley having the most touches and obviously the box <laughs> has something to yeah. do with that. Yeah. I think for me is the fact that when he gets away, he kind of comes back for contact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's just never a good look. Yeah. Like, Unless look, you get something super clumsy. Yeah. Then it, yeah. That broadcast angle, like when when I watched it from the angle on telly looked like an absolute yeah. stone wall, like most obvious penalty you'd ever seen in your life. I think the reverse angle, there is contact on the calf. And I think if he goes down, as soon as there is that contact, it gets given. The mm. issue is he then kind of half tries to shave himself up to shoot. And that gives the hungry defender enough time to get his shoulder in, get back across him. Yeah. And then actually from that point, it's a free kick to Hungary because the Scotland player then drags oh, him by the arm and pulls him back onto that. himself. So look, if, if he goes down when the contact happens, it's probably given. And as you said, if it's given, there's no way it's getting overturned. Um, but I, I, I think he gave the hungry defender a bit too much. The Scotland fans in the King's Head in Tooting Beck really did think it was a penalty. I'm sure they, they did. They really, really I'm did I'm sure think they it thought was it was a penalty in every single pub. They up thought the it was a penalty at the time yeah. for all the replays. And then also when they put BBC News on with a report on the game immediately after the game, they also thought it was then, but more like despairingly. It was sort of like yeah. anger turned to just like, Pure, unadulterated but Also, despair. Hungary was... hit the woodwork twice. Yeah. They got cut open and hit the woodwork twice. They should have been home yeah. and dried. Last 10 minutes was a good amount of chaos as well. Yeah. Is the England fans that are killing me? Is the, is it, I totally get why people hate us. Because we actually just... Yeah. Oh, we're, we're hardly graceful about Scotland yeah. getting dumped out. Really. There were two, two very brave England fans in the pub cheering everything Hungary did <laughs> last yeah. night. I was like... If they weren't so sad, this could like you could get an absolute hiding mm. up on Tooting High Street. But yeah, I, I can see why people hate us, and specifically why Scotland fans hate England fans. I, I just think Scotland overall are just like players wise, I think they're not bad. Mm. But it's as a team, you mentioned it before upstairs in the office, they're so functional and so like they don't mm. really have that other than Billy Gilmore. Yeah. Even then, they don't have someone that will go win a game a from fair, one moment. Yeah. With, like, quality, no, not and, at all. Like you see teams like Aust Austria look good. Yeah. Austria look good. Switzerland look good. Like you see, there's no identity goal. about the way yeah. that Scotland play football. I mean, I, I, I think we said in the last episode. Like I like Steve Clark quite a lot. I would have liked him to have done well. Um, I'm not sure that he comes back from from this. I have no yeah. idea. Like if I'm if I'm at the Scottish FA now, I have no idea what you want your country to look like when you're playing football because yeah. they were just completely void of any kind of identity at all. 
um, long way to go throughout the tournament yeah. as well. It wasn't yeah. just yeah, last yeah, night; yeah. it was all three games. They were either shit or boring. Yeah, like there wasn't much else than that, to be honest. So, yeah, yeah. yeah I happy, think happy, 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 happy thoughts for happy yeah, thoughts. Yeah. Scotland on a Monday I think morning. it's time to move back to a country that's still in the Euros, and that's England. Smooth. That was smooth, innit? Yeah, it's, mate, this <laughs> guy. So right, where did we get him from? See you later. <laughs> um, but yeah, England. There's been a lot of stick on Harry Kane and from my guy Lineker. I love Lineker, by the way. And Lineker decided to tell Kane on his podcast and BBC Sport a few home truths. In the pre-match press conference, a journalist decided to ask Harry Kane about it. And here's his response. And finally, um, I don't know if you heard his podcast, but uh, Gary Lineker had a, uh, a word to describe England's performance. Um, in his podcast. Uh, do you think it's helpful uh, for somebody like him to describe it as shit on the eve of such a big game, particularly when you're top of the group with four points? And do you think maybe you should stick to flogging crisps? <laughs> no, look, I think it's always, you know, I'd never want to be you know, disrespectful to any player, especially, you know, a player who's worn the shirt and knows what it's like to, to play for England. But, um, of course, I think what maybe ex-players or ex-players who are pundits now have got to realise is that the, it's very hard not to listen to it now, especially for some players who are not used to it or some players who are new to, to the environment. So, um, yeah, I always feel like they have a, a responsibility. I know they've got to be honest and give their opinion, but also their responsibility of being an ex-player, an ex-England player that a lot of players looked up to, that, you know, uh, people do care about what they say and people do, do listen to them. So... Um, look, like I touched on, everyone's got their opinion, but the bottom line is uh, we haven't won nothing as a nation for a long, long time. And, you know, a lot of these players were, were part of that as well, and they know how tough it is. So it's not digging anyone now, but it's just the reality that, you know, they do know that it's tough to, to play in these major tournaments and tough to, to play for England. But, yeah, look, I'd never disrespect any ex-player. Uh, all I'd say is just, you know, remember what it was like to, to wear the shirt and uh, that their words are listened to and, and you know, some of the lads, or I don't know how many of the lads, but you know you do hear it, and uh, the, we all want to win a major tournament. I'm sure they want us to win a major tournament, and um, yeah, being as helpful as they can and, and building the lads up with confidence would be a, a much better way of, of going about it. I understand why Harry Kane has jumped to the defence of the young players in the England squad. There are a lot of young players in there, and it looks as though with the way that the last two performances have been, we are going to be calling on, on them. Probably Adam Wharton, um, Kobe Maynard a bit more as well. I do understand what he's saying in the for the players that this is their first taste of a major international tournament, they need sort of easing into it. But at the same time, I don't really understand how much of an issue Harry Kane can have with it in the fact that England were absolutely diabolical yeah. um, against Denmark. He's acting as a captain by coming out and saying... You know, there's young players in this squad that don't need to hear it. We need them to focus on other things and get them used to playing for their country. That's absolutely fine. I don't have any problem with that. But it's it's naive and disingenuous to dismiss Gary Lineker's comments because they are unfortunately, whether he likes it or not, how the entire country is yeah, feeling. Has perceived yeah. the first two like, performances for sure. That we we haven't been anywhere near good enough. And I'm not saying it's Harry Kane's fault. It's not. But it's very naive to just sit there and say, oh well, stop having a go. Why are the press always having a go? It's interesting about like. The he, he's obviously saying like basically we should support like yeah, the, yeah. the media should be supporting the national team and I think if he'd said that about fans like booing I would agree with him because yeah. like it's about the changing role of fandom where it's like you're there to support your team whereas actually fans there is this element of like entitlement and like I think if you're going to support England like you should support them until they are out of the tournament like Scotland did yeah like, yeah. like all throughout their time but yeah. there's also this part part of it where it's like almost like general opinion police where it's like who can have an opinion on anything yeah. where it's like well actually That's the, most, Gary, Gary the most qualified people yeah. on England being both good and shit at major tournaments yeah. are pundits who yeah. have played and he made the point play. where it's like they've been there they know how difficult it is and yes they do and that maybe they should empathise a little bit more That that is a fair enough point but actually if they can't have an opinion on something that is really like we haven't played well there is no doubt about that mm. And to call it shit is to call it mid or whatever, like whatever word yeah. he uses, yeah. Yeah. it's still critical. So it's just like, and he is, and we're now in this space with like Lineker and Gary Neville having podcasts where they are at lib liberty to be a bit more critical than they could mm -hmm. be on national TV. So the media landscape has yeah. changed. And this is an example of like Lineker using that 
free license effectively like creative license to go a little bit harder than he would on tv yeah and it's it's something to get used to for players and it's the first major tournament where like podcasts have been like everywhere with yeah old ex-players any every, everyone their mums has got a podcast around here <laughs> that, that's such and it's a just good like point. it's changed the landscape but i see what kane is saying but i don't think he can say yeah ex like pundits and ex players yeah. shouldn't say what they think because they know how tough it is yeah, if anything 100%. that makes them super qualified to say exactly what they think that's yeah. the the podcast thing is such a great point because is their own podcast that BBC producers are not telling them you can't yeah. say this, you can't say that. And if anything, they would actually be they would actually want to say more because mm. at the end of the day it gets them more clicks. That, yeah. That's that's the way it is. But I think for someone like Gary Lineker, he kind of has every right like he's been yeah. there, done it. But then ugh, it's a weird one because English media is known for bring people up, up bring them down. down. I yeah. think when it in footballing terms. I think have your opinion within football, but you know when it's off the pitch, I think that's where the English media go wrong. Mm. Like leave the off the pitch stuff alone. If they're not performing football, have your opinion. Mm. That's just for my personal opinion. It, it's such a weird one. I, I think think's... overall yeah. Kane, Kane is right. It isn't helpful. No. Yeah. But it's not Gary Lineker's job yeah. to help the England national football team. He is there to critique mm. and give his opinion. And he has had a little bit of a nibble because he, he could have absolutely have just left it at that. Yeah. He, could, yeah. he could have said, there's always going to be a lot of noise around us. We know we haven't performed it's fine, let's move on. Yeah. He has had a nibble and he has yeah. he has tried to clap back in. Yeah, yeah. it is basically a media trained way of saying, go in like a fuck you. Yeah. I think the actual media training would have been to say, do what Joel's, yeah. don't go near it, just be like, fair enough, he has his opinion. Yeah. It doesn't if, affect it, us it, in if, the camp. If, you know, if the line, that's it. If the, if the line that they're constantly trying to pedal is, well, actually, we're trying to keep the noise out and just focus on mm. the game, then that's your go-to response. Yeah. And the yeah. fact that he didn't... But it is, it is true that Kane did say it's like, it's a hundred times harder to keep the noise out now. And th that is a fair yeah. point. Like, That's I, facts. I don't disagree with, with, with what he said. And, and again, as, as a captain standing in front of his his new young players, yeah. he's absolutely done the right thing. But, mm. you know, there, there is a naivety to it. In, it's not just as simple as saying you don't get to give your opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Hindsight yeah. Yeah. is the thing that will actually judge whether Kane was right. Mm. So say if we go and win it, there'll be a documentary about it on Netflix or iPlayer or whatever. And it'll be like, oh, this was the moment where it Kane changed, had to stand or... up and show his leadership and yeah. protect his herd or whatever it is. They'll, they'll dress it up. If we don't win it, it will be the moment that the pressure got the head to went, him. Yeah. yeah, the yeah. pressure yeah. got to him and the head went. Like that it, hindsight dictates whether this is a was a good thing to do or a bad thing to do. Because it might be like in the interviews in this imaginary Netflix documentary, Saka and Eze and like all the young players that are like Wharton, Mainu are like, Oh, when Harry just sat up there and fucking defended us like that, I just fucking tears in my eyes. Like <laughs> it made me want it, to play it's for like, the like yeah. Harry, like um, like Harry Redknapp's moment with Lampard at yeah. West Ham, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like it could have that effect, and it uh, it's hindsight that will di dictate that. I do think we're looking like we're beyond. I don't think we're going to win it. I think we're going to... Oh. Every team I've watched, oh. I'm like, I wouldn't want to play them in the quarters. Wouldn't want to play... Them. Like, even Austria this I morning. I wouldn't want to play Austria. Like, I was yeah. like, fuck me. Wouldn't want to get them I, in the no. round of 16. I think if Austria come up against us, they'll be licking their lips. They're yeah. like, their yeah. country slowly, slowly starting to turn against them a little bit. They're not being great on the pitch. We know where we could expose them. And honestly, I think they would give us a serious game. Overall, we're sitting here with four points top of the group. And we're going to talk about like the next VT is England fans on Southgate. And it's like, well, we are, we have not lost a game. So like this is English media at its best. It's like, we're doing okay, but it's a crisis. Like there needs to be a crisis club and it's England because we're not playing free flowing, like fuck yeah. off football. Basically. It is actually a crisis though. Next VT, we're going to talk about Southgate and England fans reacting to just Southgate in general, because he has a lot of questions to be answered because he has been dreadful in my opinion. <laughs> No, honestly, honestly, Southgate. That is, is why Southgate's got a load of questions. No, because honestly, Ibi, from me, no, Ibi's just from been sending him has got so some much. bloody opinions Wait, about the way he's playing. If I football. get Southgate's email, Eze <laughs> on, Wharton on, just do it. But yeah, Surely England fans react to Southgate. Gareth.southgate at fa.com. Yeah, I'd have thought so. That's, you'd imagine. Very, very simple. Yeah. We're going to have to bleep that. <laughs> yeah. In case it is. Oh, shit. <laughs> same old, same old. I mean, what, what else can you say, really? I mean,. We've got the most valuable squad in the in the world. We've got the best attack in the world, and Gareth Southgate just doesn't know how to put the pieces together. We're not gelling. 
it really is like I just don't get the structures at the moment and are they listening to the manager too much why are they playing like they're playing I thought with the force we've got they'd all be like they'd be more attacking we'd be more like the Spanish more like Portugal but we're not showing it I just think something in the background's not right saying that training is not going down too well and I just think there needs to be something done a lot more I don't know what it is is it an internal thing that we just don't know about is there something to be said for Maybe if Gareth can't get the best out of world-class talent like Foden and Bellingham, is, is there something to be said of Gareth's ability to manage the team or do you not feel that? Uh, no, I think it's been questionable probably, yeah. Yeah, through his whole England tenure, I would say, and in the big moments, your semi-final and your final, he hasn't quite got us over the line, we're probably with the better side. The Italy game in particular, I would say, we, well, we should have won that game, scoring that early and going on and yeah, win the tournament, but yeah. Yeah, it's probably a yeah, little bit mismanaged, I, I would say, and his in-game management's always been questionable, hasn't it? Gareth, please. Please get my boy Eze on, bring some flair, get Gordon, get Foden off, please. Just one game, try it against on Tuesday. I'm actually begging you, down the camera, I'm begging you, Foden off, Eze on, and you'll see why I'm top on football manager. Please. <laughs> There's going to have to be changes in there um, before tomorrow night. I think for me, Anthony Gordon should come in. Yes. We need someone who's going to run behind and who isn't seemingly afraid of the left wing. My favorite, One of my favourite things about this has been... The um, have you seen the adverts on the bus stops with Phil Foden where he's like, my the only position I'm not comfortable in is losing, and it's like, so it's like and on the left, <laughs> yeah, apparently. very much on the left, um, uh, anywhere not near Pep Guardiola. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd like to see Gordon come in. I think, you know, I think we're gonna we're gonna talk about in in a bit the um the Trent experiment, the stats from the game before um they took when did they take Trent off? Fifty four minutes yeah. or something? Fifty five minutes. Yeah. He actually has the best chance creation stats on the entire yeah. pitch. The issue with, for me, with the Trent experiment is that if you're going to play him in midfield, you have to have the right system around him to enable him yeah. to do that and to bring out the best in him. We don't have that. It's currently just Trent is playing in midfield. And that's as far yeah. as, the, as the thought process goes. You're, you're fitting in him, fitting yeah, him into the, exactly. the Phillips hole that's been yeah, left behind. Yeah, and that's yeah. mental as well, yeah. by the way. If we're going to talk about Southgate, like I, I get it, like... I think Hunter was saying the other day, like on Twitter, he was like, people coming out and laughing at Southgate over the Phillips line. It, you know, it's, it's not what it's about, this, that, and the other. It's like, no, it's not. But it's the fact that that is what he's, it he's was, pinned that on. It was it's, a it, rare media gaff from yeah, Southgate. Yeah, he was all that bad. There's a, there's a PR guy, a comms guy yeah. standing behind him, going like, no one's saying we know it, what you mean, yeah, yeah, but, but it's we not. Don't want you to say it out, yeah. out loud. Yeah. It is. There, there was he never a chance thought, that, yeah. that he was going to pick Calvin yeah. Phillips for for the Euros. But the point is, kind of look at the team that you have. Are, are you honestly saying that in the, the the team that you've picked, that you've gone out of the way to pick, yeah. with, with the players that you left at home and haven't brought with you, you're going to say that all those players you've taken. The issue is that you can't someone yeah. to fill find someone to fill that Calvin Phillips role. Just take crazy. Calvin Phillips. That my point. That's cruel, exactly. my crazy. reading of it was he. All, I I think Southgate this the squad the squad selection and the way, uh, leaving behind some like trusted lieutenants was him almost listening to the noise. Mm. Yeah, like I think yeah. Southgate at his best has known better than England fans, known better than the clamour for mm -hmm. whoever it is. Like the fact that he's stuck with Maguire because he knows what he gives him at international yeah. level and in international tournament football. Um, and I, the only thing I was worried about when he picked his squad was like leaving behind some of the people that have just been there and done it for him. And that is what Southgate has built his whole England tenure on. Like, and I think him alluding to the Phillips, like not being able to replace Calvin Phillips, is him almost acknowledging that he listened too much. He mm. like he he went with the sort of the sort of wave of public opinion where he ha he has to pick these young players. We have to put Foden on the left. When actually, when he didn't pick Grealish, I was like, I like Grealish is, all, is whenever he plays, I think he plays well. Yeah. Like he always plays well for England. Rashford has always done it for us at major Even tournaments Sterling. off the bench. Mm. It's like tried and tested Southgate isms almost. Yeah that now he doesn't feel like he has access to. He doesn't, I mean, I don't trust Anthony Gordon off the bench in the same way that I recognise Rashford for England. I, it's the same with even Raheem Sterling. I was like, Raheem Sterling had an okay season, but at the last two major tournaments, arguably been our best player. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely at the last Euros. And I sort of thought it was like Southgate almost like alluding to 
the fact that he's listened a bit too much. He feels like he can't there try. Ha, there, ha, there has definitely been that. I, th- I think it's also been a matter of he's he's picked a squad of players because they are the best players, not because mm. they are necessarily going to make the best team. And yeah. I think that's where a big bit of the imbalance has come from the first two games. Yeah. Now on Wednesday, he need um, on Tuesday, sorry, he needs to make sure that he's picking the best team, yeah. not the, the best, best 11 individual yeah. players. If we're back to like, so much of this whole discourse has it's been just... Mike Bassett. Like the <laughs> whole, yeah. it's like, formation it's like the whole discourse in the media feels very very from that film yeah it feels very very naughty it feels very very skulls on the left it feels like the whole feeling is like back to the golden generation part two where it's like we have to get all of these players working together when actually joe cole's sitting on the bench or whatever it is it's like we do have the answers but i think southgate does need to be brave not in who he listens to but just go with like we we I think we all agreed it's going to be his last tournament. Mm-hmm. Go out on what you think is the best way to do it. Like do it your way. Like go and say to the media, Southgate ball. Like what Mike Bassett did. We will be playing four four fucking two. Whatever the Southgate version of that is, I would prefer to see Gareth Southgate, the most successful England manager since Alf Ramsey. I'd prefer to see him do that than just peter out on listening to other people yeah. listening to public opinion go and do it your way and be fucking bold in it rather than just like this sort of listening to whoever's the noises yeah, but- from outside he just needs to do it his way and if that is sticking with Foden out on the left i'm okay with it if he thinks trent is the best solution do it and like fall on your sword be ultimately it's up, it, it, it's up to whoever's going to replace him to get the best out of players like Trent, yeah. Kobe, Adam Wharton, this, that, and the other. That, that's the manager who's going to be responsible for betting it in. Yes, we have a fantastic opportunity with the talent that we have to win this Euros. That was the idea coming into mm. it, is that he has to take these players because why wouldn't you? They'll help mm. us win the Euros. From what we've seen in the first two games, he doesn't know how to use them correctly within his system. <laughs> and yeah. therefore, it ain't going to help us win the Euros. They're just going to kind of be there and they're going to be used incorrectly. So as you said, why not do it yeah. as well? Just before we move on, you mentioned Southgate's last tournament. Who? Just just a name, no explanation. Who would you want to see take over? Poch. I think Poch would be great as an international manager. That's that's really interesting. I'm just not against. I'm against um, international like different. Oh, you'd have yeah. it all. Um... Oh, you, you have... said last. You said last yeah. week you bring Allardyce back because he's oh, English. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> if he's top three, Allardyce, Sean Dyche, <laughs> and fucking Eddie Howe. Yeah. You know? Eddie Howe wouldn't be the worst. I take by Eddie Howe. I would like to see Eddie Howe do it. I don't believe for a minute that Eddie Howe is the long-term project manager that Newcastle have in mind. I think yeah, they want think someone a... with sex appeal and someone that's won stuff. Got Jason Tindall there for Well, that. that's it. Oh, that's God. true. I'd love to God. see Eddie Howe. Yeah. The big decision tomorrow is if Trent will still be playing next to Declan Rice at centre mid. We decided to ask the England fans what they think of Trent. Trent in midfield. Terrible. Doesn't deserve to be on the start in 11 whatsoever. I mean, in midfield... Everyone can see he doesn't really offer much. I mean, he's got, he can pick out a pass here and there, but for the most part, it doesn't really add a lot of value to the squad. He's not a great fullback. He shouldn't be an international fullback, and he shouldn't be an international midfielder. He doesn't have that ability in midfield. You know, he's an okay player in the club, but he's not a great midfielder, and he's not a great fullback. If he doesn't play for his club in that position, why would they play him in for his country in that position? It doesn't make sense to me. There's plenty of midfielders who are good enough to play in that position without moving someone who's never played there before in his life. Okay, cool. Number one, don't ever call Trent. What, was, what did he say? Immediate, oh, he's not good enough for his club. He said he wasn't he said a good right-back. He's a right good back. club player. Yeah, no, yeah. he's not. He's a world-class club player. Yeah, he's yeah. one of the best right-backs in the world. He might not be doing that centre mid, but please don't disrespect what he's done for Liverpool. Saying he's not a good fullback is just nonsense. Right, back onto England now. You've had your Liverpool. No, sorry. I'm just like, that's fight, just like, that's, we're not doing that. Say, saying that he isn't a good fullback is utter nonsense. Yeah, right? yeah. He, he knows there's, there's strengths and weaknesses to his game. He, I mean, go back for his stats the last five years and tell me that he's yeah. not one of the best fullbacks Has Trent ever come out and be like, I want to play centre mid? Like, I'm actually curious to know if he actually wants to do... I can't what... remember on record. I think he's probably said, like, the sort of media trained, I'm, I'll play for... He used to play further up in the academy. Yeah. Than I know he used to play thing. centre mid, but it's just like, I would love to know what's going through his mind yeah. in all of this, because he's like, he might not even want to play there. He might actually find it uncomfortable. <laughs> Can we better right back? Please. Can you imagine, like, please? But yeah, I think... We have to change it up. I think Trent has to come out. I think we actually put Mainu in there. I think we've, I, this I whole... can see him do it. I can see him putting Mainu in, but I can also see him reverting to type 
putting Gallagher in as oh, Hendo no, Mark II. No. And I'm not against I'm not that. Against, no, please. I mean, Gallagher is a good footballer in his own right. He fits a role that has that Southgate has used successfully in the last few tournaments. So I'm not against him. I, I would, The thing that I would actually like to see is someone come in. I mean, and we don't have this player, I don't think. That, you know, Arteta did it with Rice where he played Jorginho and Rice is like the eight. Yeah. I think, Jude. Well, no, I don't. But Jude won't do that four role in the same way that Jorginho yeah, did he'll, it. Yeah, he goes up too six, much, depending on your, your preference. But it's, um, I think Rice is actually, would be a great box to box and he's a perfect player for that because he can do yeah. everything. I just don't know whether we have the players around to do that. A play, the player that is the Jorginho or the I think Thomas Party did it as well but it's like we don't have that person in yeah. the England team Rice is the best yeah. four in yeah. the whole team so but I think he'll probably play Gallagher he'll revert to type and I don't necessarily think that's the worst thing in the world Luke Shaw is apparently training today which I think changes the whole Massively. dynamic yeah. Yeah. having that width with Foden there Foden is a player that into he like plays with other people. He is not going to go and beat his man and just do what Sterling did at previous yeah, Euros, yeah. which is like get to the byline, cross it, get to the byline, shoot, whatever it was. Like just beat your man. He is not that. He yeah, plays yeah. best with other people yeah. around yeah, him. Yeah, and, like, and like we said last week, you've got Kieran Trippier who's been cutting inside. Yeah. You, you, have, you have to have that link up between the fullback yeah. and the winger going down that left-hand side. I think for me, it's a thing where Trent oh, is such a weird one. Trent is good in centre mid in certain scenarios, but that's not starting. So when he came off and then Gareth made the three subs of Watkins, um, Eze, Eze, and who else was it? Sorry? I can't remember who else he brought on. Uh, Jared Ger Bowen. I think in that position where you have now runners in behind, Trent is actually perfect yeah. for that. That that's all, my thing is. Well, that was the really odd thing is that is he took him bought, off. He they he took Trent off. And then bought on three runners. Exactly. Yeah. With no one to and feed Belli the ball because they found that the that pass exactly. that Trent was in there to do. Exactly. 100%. This yeah. is the thing when I said earlier on about the issue with Southgate trying to play Trent in the middle is that he doesn't have the system around him to mm. allow him to do that. His subs also don't help. Exactly. There's no point making those changes when you've already brought off the one player who's having any luck with any creativity yeah. at all. I think, I think you, it, I'm not for Gallagher, but you could start him. And then when times get tough and you make them free changes or you get a Gordon on or J Jared Bowen, Trent's actually the perfect player to do that pass yeah. and to really like break lines. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Get Jordan me the Anderson job, should have gone to the Euros. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. I, get me the job. I just can't wait for us to absolutely batter Slovenia. Yeah. And then the whole time, home. the it's whole time it's, it's, it's just like it's bloody clicked, and yeah. that's all it takes. Like football at major tournaments is the most fickle thing yeah. in the yeah. world because you go from cloud nine like to below the, below ground it, you get in up. Yeah. days, yeah. and it just becomes it, it's turbulent. And that's I think overall, I think it's not as bad as it's actually seemed. I think it's... No, it's bad. I think... I think <laughs> it's bad. It's no, I don't bad. think it is. I don't think we're at that point yet where it's like absolute crisis. We've got four points. We'll beat Slovenia, I'm relatively certain. And I think from there, we'll be okay. I think this has been the highest standard of football and like coherent football that I've seen at a major tournament for ages. Yeah, I, that I agree with. I think this tournament has probably the most amount of teams that could probably go on and win it. You could yeah. probably name like five, six teams are, are yeah. actually in with a chance. Three or four dark horses that will put big, te like, Under big teams out. Yeah. Or I, I do yeah. agree with that. Guys, that's all we have time for today. Thank you for tuning in to Football Trending. Please like, comment and subscribe. Get me more followers. I need the England job. And we're out. <laughs>